this one kind of quick. The other day, um, with Tesla, we had a fundamental change where they did a five for one stock split. Stock splits are bad, and um, I was not expecting them to do this, but I, I could see the reasons why they want to, uh, because it goes over and it will help propel the stock upward um, and make it easier to go over and buy and put the memory back into uh, the area of the two to three hundred dollar range when it does split and um, make it easier for people to buy since there's such a high degree of interest I think Tesla is the number one stock um, plus the fact that you got the the Fed pumping so much liquidity into the market for the election coming up and so forth and you know um, I almost feel like the Fed works for Trump now so it's not really worth uh, the risk anymore so I've closed out all the positions and you know, I, overall, I did very well with it from where it was, but the last one ate into my profits. Um, but no big deal. Overall, it was a good trade. Uh, I just don't feel like taking any risk or trying to um, hold on to a position that could. I, I could see that one going even much higher than where we are right now, especially with the five to one stock split. Um, even though the valuation is absurd. I mean, this company is going to be worth more than all the five top car manufacturers that actually have been around for uh, forever. <laughs> and, um, you know, it, it's I don't think it's going to last and it's probably going to collapse at some point after the election. But we'll see. I mean, they are the future. You know, EVs are, are the future. But, um, you know, the this valuation and so forth is just bizarre. All right, now let's get back to Bitcoin. And this is one that I don't have to guess. There's no guessing. There's no, you know, anything. I, I told you the areas that I'm short. I'm short 60% of my Bitcoin holdings. And, um, you know, I'm going to wait for the move down to the 8,000 level. Now, Red Drum has decided to prod me like I'm cattle or something, poke me and see what kind of reaction he can get. You know, I really don't appreciate that because I don't change what I do. It's not an emotional choice. You know, let, let's go back to in time when uh, this was in the 13, it went almost up to 14,000 and I was shorting and everybody was giving me hell. You know, they were becoming impatient and they were freaking out. You're kind of doing the same thing. And the ironic part is you're doing it at the same level too. So this 12,000 area turns into an emotional point, um, it seems, for people. And uh, the fear, I guess, increases or something within that. That's kind of an interesting, um, uh, you know, because that happened before in the past. And nobody was expecting the, the pullback and whatnot back then, where we dropped all the way down to uh, under 4,000. Um, but, you know, that's where I closed out all my shorts as we, we did that. And I went long, and that's where we are today. And then... You know, I started shorting again. I'm sorry. <laughs> and uh, when we go back down to 8,000 and under, you know, because this is the area I'm looking for, you know, uh, it, it's a trade. I, there's nothing for me to do. I don't think. I don't feel. I'm not trying to guess. There's no invalidation. Uh, fundamentally, everything has remained the same. And, uh, you know, the numbers are the numbers. And they're going to play out. Um, and we'll see what happens. But uh, betting against me or trying to come up with this conjecture of, uh, you know, uh, it's pointless. So don't do that anymore. Um, all you're doing is aggravating me. And um, there's no point to it. Um, you know, it, the trade's the trade. Uh, we know about AMD. AMD is up in this area up here. And uh, I we've hit fully our value and so forth and we could easily get a pullback that goes all the way back down here at some point but I mean this is such a great company um, I've got half of what I own on this um, I'm just gonna hold on to it there's nothing to really do with it I have, I have a th feeling that it, over the next few years even if it comes to a pullback um, that we're gonna have some good upside so I like that and you know my feelings on silver my second biggest holding outside of Bitcoin, and I love silver. Uh, we pulled back to the 23 range down here, 
I was hoping we'd go a little bit lower, hit right here, so I could buy some back and for a short-term trade back up to here. Um, but that did not occur. It pulled back, did not give me the buying opportunity, and um, is now oscillating to the upside. And we'll see what happens to see if it makes its move to the uh, mid-30 range up here. Um, which would be more logical to occur. You know, my thoughts on this one, this is one I just want to basically hold kind of like Bitcoin, um, except for uh, this has more upside potential where Bitcoin first has to do the downside uh, wiggle before it can consolidate and make its uh, you know move to the all-time highs and above. Uh, you know, statistically, that's the, the game plan, and um, you know, numbers are there for for that to occur. This one has upside potential, um, just like AMD, and so uh, you know, there's not anything else I'm going to do but hold silver and uh, wait to see what happens on Bitcoin. Uh, I am looking for this to get somewhere within the next few months out of nowhere whoosh you know you get a big down move for whatever reason so i think it's going to probably be tied to tether it'll be interesting to see um if tether comes out and um but some some news or something eh, it'll be very interesting to see <laughs> and then everybody's going to freak out and we'll start the whole ball game all over again um but after that point um there statistically with everything that uh, going back in the chart and whatnot that should occur that um, will lead to those all-time highs and higher uh, from there but you know we'll wait and see and uh, that's the game plan there's nothing to think about there's no invalidated or any of that silliness that other groups use for terminology um, you know uh, uh, we'll see um, this, I'm not a day trader uh, you know the way I trade and uh, think about the accuracy um, you know what are, what is the likelihood of me being wrong versus you know hey you never know but uh, those are the numbers and I have to trade what's there not what I think feel or desire or I don't do the whole fear or greed thing so uh, do you understand that but let it go let, let go of your emotions red drum other than that, you guys have a great week, and I will talk to you next time. All right, bye.